What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light, a place where you're going God's word. You're going to learn God's word is going to transform and improve your life. And today we have another devotional from our Rap Study of Realities by Pastor Chris. And today's topic we're going to be talking about always remember how you look. And our theme scripture is going to be from James chapter one verse twenty five. We're going to read it. I'll read through it. And then we'll examine the scriptures together and learn together and look into it. So let's get into it. And it says, um, James chapter 1 verse 25 says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And let me read on. It says, The word of God is the mirror of God. The Bible says anyone who hears the word and doesn't act according accordingly is like a man who looks at himself in a mirror, turns around and forgets what he looked like. That's from James chapter 1, verse 23, 24. This means God expects you to always remember who you are according to the word. He wants you to always remember that his word projects your image as the glory of God. Hmm, this is... This is quite interesting. This is a lot of, um, like I always say, I think the biggest thing in Christianity is you discover your new identity in Christ. It's like an identity thing, you know. When you're born again, you're not the same person that you used to be. So, and today you're talking about always remember how you look. And the Word of God reveals how you look. It's, it's God's mirror that shows you your true image, your true picture. Um... Because you're not you, the the way you see yourself, the way you see circumstances is not the same way when you're a Christian. When you're a Christian, something happened. You, you became a new creature. Your spirit, your spirit was transformed. Actually, I want to show you something before we get into that. Let's just go to another scripture. Uh, second, it's a famous scripture. Everybody knows it, but we'll go into it. Um, yeah, I think it's a. Uh, Change the version. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. That should be it. Let's find that real quick. And it says, therefore, if any man, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know. So this is important. It says, if you're in Christ. You are a new type of being now. You are a new type of man. This is a different identity. You're not the old person that you used to be. And it's not like um, like a change of characters. Like, oh man, I used to be a bad person. I used to do bad things. And now I'm a Christian. I've changed my ways. This is beyond changing your ways or changing your character. This is an actual rebirth. It's an actual... That's why we mean to be born again. You, It's a new person that was born. This is not the old person. Your spirit has been renewed. You're a new type of being you're not the old being this is this is beyond a change of of characters a change of state you actually were born again a new person was born again a new creature you are a new person so this is actually person person does not even qualify right because it means it can kind of imply oh man i used to i'm, I'm changing my ways this is beyond changing of 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 character or changing of what you used to do this is actually a new species of being you know when you have the human race the animal race then you got the christian race you are a new type of being this is not this is you're born of god's word you and that's why he put it when you read that he says you if any man be in christ he's a new creature that's a perfect way to, to qualify this he could have said he's a new person but no he tried he, he was trying to tell you this is a new species of being you're not the old human being that you used to think. No, this is you. This is a rebirth, and that's why when we go back here, he said the Word of God teaches us now, shows us um, our identity, and then shows us, you know, because our mind will remember like the old person, and we start thinking the way the old person used to think. But now this is a new species of being. He's showing you, no, you're not that old dude anymore. That's how you change, you, you, you renew your mind with the word of God. He said, if you look into God's mirror, God, the perfect law of liberty. I like the way he calls it. The perfect law of liberty. 
you know, and the Bible says the word of God is God's mirror. It shows you your true image, your true identity. This is who you are. Like the mirror God said, look, look into the word. This is exactly who you are. This is exactly what you have. This is exactly what you can do. Um, and it says, the Bible says, anyone who, who hears the word and does not act accordingly. So if you listen to the word and then you see these pictures, the word paints about you and shows you the mirror and then you don't act like that, you forget. He said, he turns around and forgets. He said, don't forget who you are. God expects you when he shows you his word and shows you all what you have to remember what you saw in the word. He, he basically shows you a mirror and say, hey, this is how you look like. Don't forget how you look. And that, he said, and that image is the glory of God. <laughs> and anyway, let's keep on going. You must say, no, that can't be. That can't, no, that can't be. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it explains it. It says, as we look into the glory of God in a mirror, we are metamorphosed. We are changed into that same image from glory to glory. What does this mean? We know that a mirror only reflects what it sets before it. Now, as you study the word of God, the word, as you study the word, particularly the epistles, the reflection you see is the glory of God. That's the real you. This is what the Lord is asking you not to forget. Oh man, this is big. He's saying the word of God shows you the glory of God. You are actually the beauty of God. This is amazing. Because the mirror refre reflects the image. It does not show you. You don't go to a mirror and look and then you see something totally different. If you went to a mirror and then you're looking to look in the mirror and then you saw a different image of someone else. Like I'm talking about now physically. You'll be freaked out. Like, wow, what's going on here? But a mirror reflects your true image. If you if you have a tie on or if you put in makeup, you can actually see yourself. And then he's and the word of God is telling us the God's word is a mirror and he's showing us that mirror reflects the glory of God. Meaning we are the glory of God. Man, this is I'm just this is a big thing. So we actually the, the glory of God. God is telling us, don't forget, we are you're actually the glory of God. You're the beauty of God. The image of oh man, this is big. This is big. Um, and it's let's keep on reading. It says the word, the word, the mirror of God reveals that you're you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the seed of Abraham. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. These and other re realities are reflections of you that you shouldn't forget. This is basically what it is. The, the, the word of God is showing you your identity. You're a joint heir with Christ. All that belongs to the Father belongs to you. You're the righteousness of God. You got divine life. You got eternal life. The, the mirror of God is showing these things. It's a new, this new creature, this new creature is the righteousness of God. This new creature is the glory of God. This new creature cannot be sick because he has eternal life. Why? Wow. And, and the word of God is telling us, don't forget what you see. So when we study the scripture, like right now we listen to the word, as we're studying together, don't forget what we're learning. Don't go like, oh, and then you forget, and then something happens. You forget what you just we just studied or what you read. No, the mirror God saying, don't forget. When you see it in the mirror, keep on looking at it, but don't forget. Do remember what you saw and act like that. Act as the righteousness of God, because you are the righteousness of God. Act as a joint heir with Christ, because all things belong to you. Don't talk loud. Don't talk poverty, because the world is yours. Act like that, because you're the seed of Abraham. Don't be a forgetful here. Don't read it and go like, oh, that's cute. And then it's like, oh, man, I'm, 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 I mean, my, my bank account is overdrawn. I don't know how I'm going to pay this rent. No, you're forgetting who you were then. If you talk like that, you're forgetting what you saw. Or maybe you see eternal life. You're the righteousness of God. You can't be sick. And then you, you say, oh, man, I'm feeling this pain. I'm going to take this, this medication. I need to go to the doctors. I'm sick all the time. No, you're forgetting who you are. He said, don't forget. Let me show you something, actually. Uh, let's read this version. James chapter 1 verse 25. Let's find another translation. That will actually put it way better. James chapter 1 verse 25. This is hmm, quite interesting. Ah, uh, that's fine. Let's read the message translation. Now, sometimes when you read the scripture and it's not clear to you, just try to find another translation, several translations, and then it will kind of help you. Um, Clarify some things. So, anywho, let's just keep on. Let's find this. Uh, James chapter one verse twenty five. Man, I, I, do, 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 do. let's start from verse twenty two. 
Let me highlight this so you can see it. He says, don't fool yourself <laughs> into thinking you're a listener when you're, you're anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> this is a way. And it's like some, sometimes you, this is what it is. You listen to the word and you clearly know what the word of God says. And then something happens and you, you're so frustrated and you're like, oh, man. I mean, we've all been there. It's, it's a journey. That's, that's why we learn the word. It says anybody that looks into the word and keeps on looking, you're transformed, you're metamorphosed into that image. So the more you look, the more you become. So it's a process. The more you keep on looking at God's word, the more your image, you start conforming to what he says because you're seeing your true image. So it's a journey. It's a process. And that's why we learn the word of God. If we could just learn, know the word of God one time, there's no point of keep on reading it. But the word of God transforms our lives from glory to glory. But he says, don't fool yourself into thinking you're a listener when you're anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. He says, act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in a mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea of who they are and what they look like. <laughs> That's amazing. Because the word of God shows us, for example, the word of God shows the world is yours. You're an heir of God. And then maybe during something happens in the week and then you don't have enough money to pay for something. And then you're frustrated. It's like, oh my God, I'm I'm always lacking. I'm always broke. And you start talking like that. You know, the economy is bad. And then the jobs are not available. No, no, no. You're forgetting who you are. You don't talk like that. Just because you can't see the money right now, it doesn't mean you, it's not accessible to you. Start talking faith. You say, the world is mine. I'm an heir of God. So all I require will be supplied. Now, this is now, it, it, start changing, it changes your mentality. It changes your talking. Yes, the lack might be there for now, but you don't forget who you are. You still remain composed and you still talk the right talk of who you are. Anyway, he goes on, he says, let me highlight this. He says, but whoever, whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life. Oh man, this translation is awesome. He says, but whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of his eye and sticks with it, is not distracted, scatterbrained, but a man or woman of action, that person will find delight and affirmation in the action. <laughs> that is awesome. That's so poetic. It says, if you just catch a glimpse of the word and you stick with it and you're not distracted, you know, but a woman, a man or woman of action, you put the word to work. You stick with it and you put it to action. You don't forget. It. You put it to action. You'll find delight and affirmation in action. That person will find delight and affirmation in the action. Awesome. Let's let's look at another translation. Uh, real quick, real quick. Real quick. I think common common English. Let's try that one. No, let's find it. common English. Bible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you're getting blessed by this. This is amazing. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't know what. Okay, I don't know how I jumped into Hebrews, one chapter one verse twenty-eight, twenty-five. Mm, okay. Let's start from verse 22. It says, You must be doers of the word and not hearers who mislead themselves. Those who hear, those who hear but don't do the word are, are like those who look at their faces in a the mirror. They look at themselves and walk away and immediately forget what they, they were like. But those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. Oh my God, that's some that's amazing description, ain't it? This is about those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom. The word of God is the law of freedom. Oh, man, that is amazing. It's the law of liberty. That's why it says the perfect law of liberty. The word of God sets us free. Freedom from anything, sickness, disease, failure. It is the perfect law. It is perfect. That means there's no, there's no tolerance for failure. It is the perfect law of freedom. You can't fail with this word. You can be free. And it says those that study the perfect law of freedom 
the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen, then forget, but they put it into practice in their lives. They'll be blessed in whatever they do. Man, so you listen to the word. Don't forget. Come back to the scriptures. Put it to practice. Try it out. Even though you feel like, oh, I didn't, I tried, I tried, I didn't work out. No, you say stick to it. Stick with it. This is the perfect law. It does not fail. So it does not fail. It's eternal. Show you this world cannot fail. There's no talk. You know, sometimes they say, um, well, this thing is not 100 percent but it is 99.9 percent perfect. That means it's, it's not perfect. 99.9 percent. So what happened to the other one percent? So it's not good enough. But the word of God is 100 percent. It says it is the perfect law, the law of freedom. And if you put it to practice, you you don't you don't you listen and you don't forget and put it to practice, you'll be blessed in whatever you do. The blessing is doing. Did you notice that? You, you didn't say you'll be blessed in whatever you listen to. No, you'll be blessed in whatever you do. So you have to do the word and the blessing comes from doing. Let's go back and finish this. Um, it says, you're the epitome of God's righteousness. You have his, you're his living tabernacle, the embodiment of his wisdom, love and grace. See yourself that way. Talk and act accordingly. You will experience the reality of Christ, His glory in your lives always. Hallelujah. Let's take this prayer together. Repeat it after me. Blessed Father, I thank you for your glory and righteousness in my life. I'm making progress with giant strides. I'm excellent, full of glory. Your word is working mightily in me, causing me to prosper in all I do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Right, you can... Study further study scriptures in James chapter 1 23, one we read, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And if you're following a one year Bible plan or two year plan, the scriptures are right there, pick, pick wherever that suits you. And so, if you've been blessed, just leave me a comment below, questions, whatever you have, testimonies, share, like, and comment, subscribe as usual. Share this video, it's important to spread the word around so people can learn God's word and, and watch their lives transformed. And I want to give a chance to someone that's not born again. If you don't know Jesus as the Lord of your life, today is your day to receive salvation for your soul. And it's as simple as believing in your heart that Jesus died for you and God raised him from the dead, confessing that with your mouth, and then you receive salvation. So I want to lead you into a prayer of salvation. Just say this out loud. Repeat it out loud. Mean it all your heart. Just say, Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe is alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you say that prayer, congratulations, you're born again. Um, leave me a comment and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Subscribe to this channel so you can learn more of God's word. Until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.